spread uh, web browser done to full screen is based on a paper that I uh, published a few years ago in the Utah Law Review. Um, and I'm going to try mightily to get this thing done in less than 10 minutes. So, anyhow, here we go. My talk is entitled A Third Voice, a review, of, a review of Empirical Research on the Psychological Outcomes of Restorative Justice. And restorative justice is a way of dealing with crimes. Um, it's a form of mediation in which people, uh, the victims and offenders of crime, sit down with a mediator who is there to facilitate a um, discussion is about the causes of the crime, the outcomes of the crime, and especially try to find a resolution. It seeks to repair the harm done. It includes all of the people affected by the process. Um, and it focuses more on compassion and the psychological uh, forms of justice and uh, emotions. And there are several different versions of it, the most common of which is victim-offender mediation, but also family group conferencing and others. Now, I called the presentation the third voice. That's because I see three different groups participating in restorative justice. Uh, there are the theorists who are like the legal philosophers. There are the practitioners, the people who actually do restorative justice. And then uh, the third group that includes people like me is, re is restorative justice researchers, people who gather empirical data on the nature and efficacy of restorative justice. And that's what I'm going to talk about right here. Now, this particular study is a review of published literature. Um, I looked at one, I wanted to look at articles that compared restorative justice mediations to standard court procedures, which, by the way, in 95% of the cases means plea bargaining. Um, but I wanted to look at the benefits uh, outside of uh, standard recidivism to see what else could be covered. I looked at over 100 published research reports and looked for ones that had psychological outcomes that included quantitative data. Uh, that way I would be able to combine the data and do some statistical analyses and included, as I mentioned, both restorative justice and court. I found a total of seven studies that I used, and they range from the very small, for instance, well, 58 is not that small, to the massive with 2,000 plus in them. Um, they were conducted in several different countries, U.S., Australia, Canada, and England, and uh, several of them actually employed random selection, uh, which is fabulous for research. Uh, this one employed matching, which is acceptable, and a couple of others included uh, self-selection. Anyhow, the first outcome is whether uh, the participants felt that uh, the criminal justice system was fair to them. This first one here is for victims. They're in the green on the left, and offenders are blue on the right. And in each case, the lighter bars for people who went to restorative justice and the darker bars for those who went to court. And what we see here is that, especially among victims, um, it goes from just over 50% to nearly 80% felt that the uh, criminal justice system treated them fairly. These black bars are 95% confidence intervals to indicate potential variation in the scores. Um, offenders also saw it as uh, more acceptable. Uh, in terms of satisfaction with the case, you know, one of the tragedies of court is that really only about 50% of the victims feel that they uh, are satisfied with the way the case was handled. And again, it's, over to, it's to over 75% in restorative justice and similar improvements for offenders. Uh, whether people had an opportunity to tell the story. This is one of the hallmarks of restorative justice. And you can see, for instance, in this bar, nearly all of the victims felt they were able to tell their story, whereas about two-thirds uh, could in court. Uh, similar for offenders. Was their opinion adequately considered? Um, very high for both uh, for victims in both situations, but you see a, a pretty big improvement for offenders in restorative justice, which uh, can make both parties a little more satisfied with the outcome. Whether they felt the judge or mediator was fair? Uh, again, about 85-90% for um, participants in restorative justice, both victims and offenders, but lower. Uh, for the court. Now, this is important because, especially, if I feel like if offenders feel that they are not being treated fairly, they may be more likely to re-offend. I don't have the exact data on that, but it's always a possibility. Whether the offender was held accountable, the shocking thing here is that in court, it's less than 50% of offenders, whereas it's about 80% for restorative justice. And that is just, you know, it's a shocking finding and something that definitely needs to be taking consideration. Um, whether the there was forgiveness 
uh, offered by the victim or an apology offered by the offender. It's, it's amazingly low percentages. About 20% of offenders apologize in court, but it goes up to about 40 in restorative justice. It's twice as many. Um, in court, it goes from a minuscule, about 10%, up to nearly 45%, of four, per, of four times as many. Um, it's still below 50% for both groups, but um, apologies are much more likely to come, twice as likely to come in restorative justice, and forgiveness is much more likely to come. Um, now, the problem is that last one included a very large study that included drunk driving where there was no victim uh, to apologize to. And when that, uh, those cases are removed, you actually find that the apologies go from about 25% up to nearly 75%, a huge increase, which is fabulous um, for victims to simply get the satisfaction of knowing that their hurt has been acknowledged. Whether they felt the outcome was fair, similar pattern. Whether they're satisfied with the outcome. Again, for offenders, it goes from slightly over 50% to nearly 75%, which is an improvement, should be higher. Better perception of others' behavior. Now, this is an interesting one, because from uh, victims, it goes from below 50 to over 50. Um, and that, that shows that there's more understanding of what's going on. Whether they're still upset about the crime. These are people who are in court. Over half of them are still upset about the crime after the resolution, where a smaller number, again, still about 35 or 40 percent of victims are still upset. But So it'd be nice if it were zero, but it is an improvement. Whether they're afraid of re-victimization, this is huge. About 30 percent of victims in court are afraid they're going to get hurt again whereas it goes down to about 20, 15, 20 percent for restorative justice. Again, such a substantial improvement. Uh, in summary, for victims, of, uh, restorative justice outperforms uh, court on every outcome except for consideration of opinion, and this is a statistically significant improvement in everyone. For offenders, it outperforms court on every outcome except for satisfaction. I, I had 11 or 12 outcomes. These are huge improvements, and the pattern is completely consistent. In no case did court outperform perform better than restorative justice? I should mention, ah, oh shoot, sorry about that. It's also a lot cheaper. Restorative justice, in conclusion, produces increased fairness, accountability, satisfaction, contrition, forgiveness, emotional well-being, feelings of safety, and uh, I used to have some slides that talked about a potential risk in suicide, uh, the potential to save lives. Anyhow, the idea here is that restorative justice simply works. Um, and there's the last slide with the references. And so I breezed through this pretty quickly to try to, try to get it done in less than 10 minutes. I should know that I have uh, tables that include the statistics, the chi-square analyses that I did for every one of these. And all of them except for the two that I mentioned, one for victims and one for offenders, were statistically significant and often very substantial. Um, anyhow, I think that works for right now. Hope that's been helpful.